You know when you feel good on the inside? It makes a difference. To be happy. Be happy right now. Find your happiness right now and everything else will just add to your happiness and follow through. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is very interesting, okay? Very interesting. Some people might say it's not true or they don't believe in it. Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> Let's get into it. So we are reviewing the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast, episode 169. It is called Exploring Interconnectedness and Synchronicities with Brandon Beecham. Whew, that was a mouthful. I ain't gonna lie. I'm really shocked I didn't mess that up. <laughs> and Lavender, Lavender, <laughs> Lavender is Eileen's YouTube channel. She's at 1.38 million subscribers and she's geared towards personal growth and development which is why i love her she also created a workbook it's a guided journal called the artist of life book one day hopefully i can get one because they look amazing now her guest brandon beecham is the host of his own podcast called the positive head where he is all about keeping an elevated vibration and also just had a new book released, um, I think three months ago. I'll have to put it up here. And it is called The Golden Key. So let's get into this review. Never heard of him, but I trust Eileen, so we're going to go with it. So she starts off with a heavy question and she says, if you were on an elevator ride, and you just got on and somebody asked you what your passion is and you only had 10 floors to answer it what would you say and for this question his answer he's got a good answer so i'm gonna leave you hanging on this one um i definitely wanted to put it in here for kind of like a mini challenge if somebody was to ask you what your passion was and you had 10 floors to answer, what would your answer be? That's a really good question. Definitely gonna add it to my interview series. So I will have all the information linked below. I listen to my podcast on Spotify. So you listen to yours wherever you listen to podcasts. I don't know what the iPhone version is because again, I don't have an iPhone but I highly recommend it because it's a good episode. Okay, so the first question is, what is the story of finding your journey of getting into spirituality? And he goes into a little bit of his background and talks about how he was raised Christian. He was raised in Virginia, so the South. And um, I don't know where you're at or where you're from, but out here in the South, they are heavily religious, heavily. And I feel like most people out here are Christian. So it would make sense. And he had met a lady. This is when he got a little bit older who had claimed that she could talk um, to her friend telepathically. And so he was like, no way, no way. Like, go ahead and do it. So he told the lady, I think the color was brown. And he said after a couple minutes, one of them had said it. And so I'm assuming, he doesn't go into great detail, but I'm assuming he told one, but the other one is the one who said it. So I guess kind of something like that. <laughs> and he was a believer ever since, I think, is what he was trying to get at. And that that kind of led into the category of lucid dreaming. And he used to talk to his brother about lucid dreaming. And his, what his brother didn't realize is that he could do that. And lucid dreaming is, it's an out of body experience for those who don't know what I'm talking about. And so because of all of this, he started to dive more into it and wanted to research it more and look into it a little bit more to have more information. And that's what made him dive into everything being connected and all things as one. 
And so that was an interesting story to hear. It was just, when you hear other people's experiences, it's crazy to hear such perspectives that are so different from yours. And I feel like a lot of people are so quick to like shoot down other people's perspective and not even like hear them out, you know? So the next question is, what are these experiences that he was talking about that made him believe in all of this? Like, what really started it, I guess? And he said that everything having a pattern, that everything having a pattern and being connected and synchronized is what made him really intrigued. And once he started mastering those patterns and being able to see everything is when it really jump started for him, really took off, I guess. So he gives an example about one of um, the ironic signs and that's his birthday. So he was, okay, let me get this straight. He was born on July 28th. And that's also his dad's birthday. So him and his dad had the same birthday and his dad was 28 years old when he had him. Okay. Then he goes on to saying his great grandma on his dad's side, that's the same day as her birthday. And then his great grandma, his great grandmother's mom also died on July 28th. So then he goes into more, that wasn't even the whole story. And he ends it with meeting his soulmate on the 28th. Come to find out his soulmate's ex-boyfriend died on July 28th. And something about his last name was the name of a town where he grew up at. I think it, it was just crazy. You got to hear it. It's wild. Like, it's too much for you to just wave it as, oh, that's a coincidence. Like, no, that is, that is connected. Like, connected. Hmm. So then Eileen goes into um, how it doesn't have to be like this huge, crazy, big sign like worldly sign that everything is connected and that when a coincidence happens it's a sign so it doesn't have to be something like astral projection it could be merely because everything is connected and not to write it off so quickly as everything is random almost and so he goes into a quote by someone named Robert Grant. I need to look this up and post a screenshot if I can find it. And this person, Robert, says, randomness is simply mankind's inability to perceive and comprehend God's pattern, God's pattern encryption. And I thought that was interesting. And now I know some people out there may not believe in God, which is okay, everybody has what they believe in, and that is perfectly fine. And so then he goes into healthy skepticism is a good thing, but blind skepticism is not. And he believes in trusting that everyone is right where they need to be in their journey. And so I like that he doesn't come down on someone for believing what they believe in. He accepts that people believe in other situations and other perspectives. That's very nice. I love that. And that leads into the other topics they discuss, which some of them I need to research because I have never heard of it before. So I thought that was different. And the topics were numerology, human design, gene keys, astrology, and destiny cards. So like I heard of obviously astrology and like your zodiac sign and things like that. But I have not heard of the gene keys or destiny cards. And the destiny cards, he was saying that there's like 52 cards in the deck. 
just like there's 52 weeks in the year. And it matched up in that sense. It was pretty cool to hear. He broke the whole thing down. It was wild. So I definitely want to look into that more and hopefully it can be um, a video idea. So we shall see. And so when you go into these different categories and you explore and research more about them, then you can learn more within yourself. And I guess if you don't believe in this stuff, then you wouldn't believe in researching more about yourself, going about it in this way. But if you did, then you would try to learn more about different categories on how we're made up or why we are what we are, basically. So the next question is, can you share the steps on how to manifest your perfect life, right? For beginners is what she said. But he doesn't really answer this question as much because the answer is in the book he wrote. So it would make sense to, you know, shout out his own book, you know, give credit where credit is due. And he said that in his book, there are eight steps listed on how to do so. But he goes into most people work to have money and happiness when it works the opposite. You be happy and then you find yourself doing things or having things that is a reflection of your happiness. So kind of like when people say you can't buy your happiness, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't be happy when you have the body goal you want. You should be happy first and then your body goal will come after. So I feel like kind of like that, which I think is amazing advice. We should just learn to be happy. Be happy right now. Find your happiness right now. And everything else will just add to your happiness and follow through. So Eileen sums it up as be the energy and emotions of the greatest, grandest version of yourself. I love that. I love that. This is why I love doing stuff with personal growth and self-development. Like, I'm going to say this sentence and you interpret it how you want to interpret it, but nothing bad could come from you improving on yourself. Like, invest in yourself and nothing else will matter. So, because you're trying to be the best you you can be, that there are infinite amount of futures happening to you and you have the power to choose which one you follow love this I don't think I've ever really heard of that before so you guys will have to let me know if you heard of that before that was my first time and it was different but I like it I like it I like it I like it so this brings up the topic for Eileen of asking him do you believe in fate and she asked fate is not just one path correct Oof. And I feel like I've heard this, but I also feel like I haven't heard this. So this was really interesting. You guys have to listen to this podcast. And so he goes into, it is challenging for our mind to believe that we are floating in eternity, is what he says. And that him and Eileen are always having this conversation that they're having on the podcast. I was like, what? I just, I tell me if you've heard of this. And he said it's within different channels. Or I'm wondering if that's like the same as deja vu. Like when you're in a situation with people, that's why you're having deja vu. Because you're living parallel lives with yourself in other right? Could it be? I don't know. Could be a video, but it was a really good topic. I was like, oof. So then it's kind of more like he's saying you are infinitely supported and you can't lose no matter what. 
And I thought that was very interesting. It was the first time I kind of had heard something like that. So it's pretty cool. That's what this channel is about. Learning new things and not shaming people who haven't learned it earlier or when they're supposed to is what I really meant because everybody's journey is different. You can't shame somebody else for their journey. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. What are some mistakes that anyone can make in their spiritual consciousness journey? And they kind of laughed at this one because he says, you know, nothing is really a mistake if you think about it. And that we are supposed to be where we're at for a reason. And he says, depending on the outcome you're looking for, you could judge something as a mistake. And it goes into, re he goes into a whole spiel of reincarnation and karma. <clears throat> and again, I don't want to give everything away because it was such a good podcast. It was, I was in it. I was getting lost in it, okay? And there's something he says that um, it kind of triggers people. And I thought, I think everything is interesting or cute. Like, I, I need to learn vocabulary. And it triggers people. And he says he understands why. But he says, quote, there has never been a victim of eternity. End quote. And he says this and he knows why it upsets people. And he says that because he says when you play around with ideas that everything is an energetic reflection of your current energetic state or your past energetic state or of your parallel life, then nobody has ever been a victim. And so same kind of same thing when he says like everything is a part of your journey. I, I just thought it was crazy. And he goes into this whole thing and explaining on why that would upset people and why he believes what he believes in. And then he also talks about this friend he has where, and he never said her name, but he says that when she falls asleep, well, not only when she falls asleep, but when she's awake too, she can connect herself with her parallel life in another reality. So she said... Or he said that one time she was asleep and she had lived a whole life for 20 years and then had woke up the next day. I was like, what? And then there was a piano story where she's playing the piano and all of a sudden she takes herself back to the 1800s where she was sobbing at the piano playing a melody when her significant other had left her. And in our world right now she started playing that melody from the past and she didn't even know how to play the piano oh don't you just love stories like that i know i do and then he brings up a book what is it called um journey of souls where a guy had put people under hypnosis for 30 years He did this and documented it in this book. So I think I'm going to order this book. And he asks these people under hypnosis, okay, you died. Now, where did you go next? And it talks about their journey and all their journeys have the same structure. I just love stuff like this. How can you not love stuff like this? Amazing. And Eileen brings up the fact that Again, a lot of people out there might not believe in this. And he said, you know, that's okay. Not everybody has to believe in the same thing. And to remember humility is all a part of this. And he's saying, I'm no more it than you are. And I love that, you know, he can be humble and have humility about it. Because a lot of people don't. A lot of people you know, I don't think this lip matches this eye look. 
but um, I'm just playing, right? That's okay. Okay. So they end the segment on um, questions. It's a few questions that she um, asks him from Instagram. And I won't go into all the questions because again, we love people who support. But I will go into some of his answers because some of his answers are good. I think some of the questions were like anxiety, it had mixed in with anxiety and how to do certain stuff. And so this section, he talks about breath work and he names that app called Wim Hof, W-I-M-H-O-F. And it's a free app that goes over how to teach you how to deep breathe. I will uh, link my other video about that. And meditation really helps. And he says, don't worry if you feel like you're not doing it right. Because the fact that you're trying to just sit with yourself and trying is effort enough. Like it's good enough. And you should be proud of yourself for that. Yeah, this lip does not match this look, but it's okay. I am going to choose for it not to let it get to me. Because it's just lipstick. So with the meditation and the deep breathing, when you are anxious, it's very hard to stay anxious while you have more control over your breathing. So if you notice when you get anxious, you're automatically breathing very shallow, like short, quick breaths. It's like you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain. So he says, just slow it down, take deep, big breaths, and learn to control your breathing and it'll start to decline you. And don't freak out. <laughs> It's the whole point of this is to calm down and stay calm and kind of like get back grounded. And that's when you start to awaken is when you start learning all these new habits and you start coming into yourself more and learning yourself more spiritually, you start to awaken. And he says, when you start to awaken, a lot of people describe it as light and feathery, but sometimes it can be dark and heavy. And not to be scared of that because we carry trauma. Um, he said this is proven scientifically. So I also want to look into that. There's a lot of stuff I want to look into. Okay. And that we carry trauma. I wonder, I think I said this in another video because it does sound familiar. <laughs> that we carry trauma from past us to future us, to another life us to here, and that if we are brave enough to face those demons and to face our fears, then it will be released and you will have to surrender. And he says, your challenge points are your greatest gift hiding behind it and waiting on you to work through it. What you resist persists and what you accept you move through. So in order to, in order to move through this, you have to accept your fears and accept whatever's troubling you in order to get past it. I thought that was amazing. And he ends it by saying, we are all held victim by our thoughts and beliefs on what reality is. And he loves reminding people how magnificent they are. Oh. Round of applause like we're in kindergarten. Okay, yes, I brought it out. I, this is what we need. We need more people to come forward like this. We need to spread positivity and learn how to uplift people. You could do a lot doing that. So yeah, um, I hope you took some notes and I hope you could follow along through. I don't think that was a big mess. Okay, so yeah, um, it was different, right? It was a little different. 
Is anyone on board with this? And again, this was the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast, episode 169. I will put everything in the description box below. I hope you guys have a good day today or good night. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Bye. I love when my skin feels hydrated. It's the best feeling in the world. Okay, maybe not the best, but it is a great feeling. Especially for dry skin people. Did I do it like this? In the 1990s? Hey. Okay. I did not put on concealer. We're going to do that real fast. Tragic. I listened to my cast. My cast. It's kind of like an outer body. Uh, <laughs> and he dove into the idea of the connectedness. Of all things, the connectedness. I had a hair in my brush. I think this is why people do their eyebrows first, because when they mess up, they're taking off their foundation. So maybe I need to reverse that. It's something he says when he triggered. He says, I don't know what's happening with my voice. It's, um, it's leaving me again. Ooh. Okay, it's a little different. And he loves reminding. Did I just whistle? Loves reminding? I don't know what happened. And he loves... Uh, but you never know. I wonder what happens if I do this. Oh. It gets a lot more shiny. Wow, this is fun. <laughs> it's different, right? And my hair is definitely falling out. That's cute. Okay. Bye.